the annual reorganization meeting of the White River Unified District Board at 601. Any adjustments to the agenda? We don't have a quorum yet. Yeah, we do. I'm here. Oh, Andrew's there? Yep. Okay, sorry. Sorry, the sorry. Camera on you. Bell or is it on this guy? Any adjustments? No? All right, I don't think we need to assign tie keepers. So we're gonna get right to article four, the reorganization, and start by a motion to elect a chairperson. I would move to elect Andrew Jones as our chairperson. I'll second that. Any discussion? Andrew, you're good to go. Thank you. All right, I'll do a roll call vote. Uh, Shannon? Aye. Peggy? Aye. Aye. Andrew? Aye. It's all yours. All right. Thank you. Um, all right, so next is to elect the vice chairperson. Are there any nominations for the vice chairperson? I would nominate uh, Sh Shannon to be the vice chair. I'll second that. Okay. Do um, you think we need to do a roll call for all these? Or uh, no, I don't think so. All in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. Um, now we're on to clerk. Um, is there anybody who's interested in being clerk? You probably should have talked about this ahead of time. So just to remind you guys, the clerk of the board, really it's, it's about ensuring that our meetings minutes are kept, posting them if Tammy can't be there. Um, sometimes the clerk will take them, although I've also, um, We've been able to find, now that we've recorded it, we've sent it to the note takers in the past, the recording secretaries, and they still do them. So um, that's that's the big part of the clerk of the board. Um, and if somebody's assigned a clerk now, can we change it? Can I, I would ask a question too. Um, does the clerk have to make sure that things get out to be posted in the different towns yep. or does Christy send those out? Christy does it, but I th I've asked clerks to just make certain, like we've had a couple of scenarios, Shannon, where all of a sudden it, someone stopped posting but didn't tell us. So if the clerk can just like, just make certain that the town clerk's still doing, like every, just checks has been helpful. Okay. But no, Christy sends them all out to your posting locations. I mean, I can do that unless somebody wants to or until we find a couple more people. Okay. If you're willing, um, would somebody like to make the nomination? I will be happy to nominate her. <laughs> I'll second it. Okay. All in favor of electing Shannon Clerk, say aye. 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 I assume I can hold two positions. Yeah. Yep, that's fine. All right, so appointing three members to the WRBSU full board. Um, should we do. Uh, me, Shannon, and Rodney with Peggy as an alternate. Does that sound good? That's up to Peggy. Sorry, I said my name. I heard my name. Oh, sorry. We were saying appointing three members to the full board. We were going to say 
myself and Andrew and possibly Rodney and appoint you as an alternate if one of us can't make it. Yeah, we can, we, we can try that again. Hopefully the meetings are such I can get there <laughs> one way or another. Okay, do, we don't have to vote on that. that one. No, you can just appoint this. Yep. All right. Um, one member to the WRBSU Executive Board. Um, is everybody okay with me being the I would nominate board? Andrew for that, yes. Or suggest um, and me. Shannon, you want to be the alternate? Yeah, the good with that. Okay. Um, Tammy, are you uh, okay with us appointing you recording secretary again? The concept of recording secretary, I can't remember if this is really a Tammy duty or if this is the Bethel clerk duty. Can you clarify what this one is again? Because it's your duty. It's what you've been doing. Oh, okay, great. That's all I needed to hear. Yeah, I'm okay with that. All right. I'm not over by doing that. The official clerk at the meeting, Tammy. Um, there was an instance two or three years ago where I was handling the count of votes and that is called the blah 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 and um, I just wanted to make sure that I didn't make that error again. <laughs> Thanks. Um, one member for signing AP and payroll. Um, I think last year we wound up having multiple people able to do it. Um, Rodney, are, would you like to resume signing AP and payroll? Uh, yeah, I can do that. Okay. And then um, that can be a fallback if need be. Um, yeah, I'll be the alternate, I guess. With it, um, that would be great because for some reason, my computer and my phone do not like signing those electronically. So. <laughs> okay. Um, Shannon, are you okay with staying on the negotiation board? I am happy to do that. Give you guys Thank an update you. later. And we'll point Shannon to the negotiation board. Um, so Lisa was the person on the policy committee. Um, is there anybody who would like to do the policy committee currently? I'm willing to do that if Okay. I, I could do that. Okay. We'll appoint Rodney to the policy committee. Um, and we can, yeah. Um, the truant officer, uh, who did we have last year? We were going to go with Owen last year. I think you probably went with the principal, although you could use the RPD. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's who we did yeah. last time. So you could use Royalton Police, or you could just actually, you, we could double check with him. Oscar might be a good one because I think he works for the Royalton Police. And isn't he the Bethel Constable as well? Yeah. So he would make total sense. We could appoint him. You remember Oscar's last name? Gardner. Oscar Gardner. And I can just confirm that he's okay. going to take the appointment. But I think he makes sense because he's on the Royalton PD and he's the Bethel Constable. Okay. We will appoint Oscar Gardner. So last year you had hired, given that to the principals and you're doing a change in process. Is that correct then? Is that intentional? Yep. We're, okay. He's been doing more work in our schools too, I think. That it's helpful sometimes. And his first and name was first and last name was. Pardon me. Could you say that again? Oscar Gardner. Thank you. Hope oh, we just lost her quorum. We just dropped out. Shannon. Shannon. Okay. Um, why don't we give her a minute to come back in? I guess. Um, there she is. All right, sorry, my internet dropped out. Okay. Um, all right, designating newspaper and radio station for official notices. Um, the Valley News and um, Randolph Herald newspapers. Um, and what do we do for the radio station? I'm gonna look up the minutes from last year. That's probably the easiest. 
The Greater Vermont Broadcasters as the designated okay. television station. Sounds good. We'll do that. All right, Greater Vermont Broadcasters for the designated te television station for official notices. Um, date, time, and location of regular school board meetings. We'll stick with the third Tuesday of the month at 6 p.m. Um, alternating uh, campuses with virtual option as well. You're talking about when we're having the regular meetings? Can, yeah, can we... Um, hmm. oh. Jamie, I'm thinking that we may be changing this. But well, I think you should, should set your regular meeting you tomorrow or the next day. So talk at the SU of doing some more wagon wheels, but I don't I think you could still set this as your normal date and then you could still choose to move it to a wagon wheel. I, I don't see us doing wagon wheels every month. I think there's some months where we could do it when we're not building budget and things of that nature, but I think there's going to be times we're still going to need a designated regular meeting. Okay. And then Peggy had mentioned possibly doing the meeting at seven. And I think we have gotten much more efficient at meetings over time than maybe people were in the past, boards were in the past. But um, I don't know how people might feel about seven, but Peggy had put that out on the table. What do the administration think? I mean, it's it's a longer time to keep our principals around and our superintendent, so I don't love it because of that. But I mean, if it works better for the board, I also think with hybrids we can tune in that time uh, if the board's comfortable with that. You know, I'm I don't I don't love being out till nine, just to to be candid, because I don't get home until ten and I'm back in the office at seven. I don't think any of us wants or expects you to be out until nine or our principals either. So, um, um, I, I, I probably would prefer seven, but I think for now, why don't we stick with six and then see what happens with uh, the discussions over. Yeah. If we have less meetings that I think it's more doable, right? Right. Right now I'm pacing four meetings a week. Um, yeah, and so, point. yeah, I just, by Thursday, I'm, I would also say that perhaps um, when we do the wagon wheels, it might work better for the wagon wheel if other boards were starting at six, if we started at seven. So that might be a great way to sort of compromise that half of our meetings end up starting at seven. But I agree. Um, and that's part of what we'll talk about too. Yeah. Okay. So for now, we'll keep them at six, but have that in the idea for whatever the discussion is tomorrow at the SU board. Okay, um, designate posting places. Um, so the respective town post offices, town offices and school entrances and the website um, are the designated posting places. For any change we'd wanna to make to that? Well, the more places you have to post them, the more opportunity for error, so. Sure. And that seems pretty comprehensive. Okay. Um, and then other. Um, we did. Uh, the RTCC board rep. Oh, okay. Could come under other. I left that off in Right. RTCC um, board rep. Was anybody able to do that? Chris um, had been doing that before. So. I, I can do that. That'd be great, Rodney. Four meetings a, a year, Rodney, and they and they feed you well. Yeah, I, I went to one one or two in the past when uh, Chris couldn't make it, and uh, yeah, they're not very uh, stressful meetings. <laughs> Good, thanks, Rodney. I should I should um, invite you to some negotiation meetings. <laughs> we could switch. <laughs> Um, do we want to do the finance and yeah, why don't we? Yeah. All right. Um, for uh, finance committee, um, I'll stay on that. Does anybody else want to be on the finance committee? Okay, I'll keep that as as it currently is. Um, 
and then facilities committee. Um, is anybody interested in joining the facilities committee at the moment? That was uh, Chris and uh, Lisa McCrory. So I don't think we have any board members on the uh, facilities committee currently. I would, but sort of like Jamie, I'm at like four meetings this week and <laughs> negotiations and things. I, I don't think I can take on another committee right now. May we wait for that one? You get some other board members. Sure. Um, I'll, I can be on it temporarily until we find somebody else who probably wants to be. Um, now we've already done the policy. Great. Okay. Um, I think we've done all the reorganization now. So move, move to our consent agenda. Um, approving the minutes of Tuesday, February 15th, Monday, February 21st, and the special, and then the informationals on February 21st and February 28th, and the um, March 1st, Tuesday, March 1st annual uh, minutes, which I guess is just the, the vote. Is that the yeah, that should happen. Yeah, uh, we don't have minutes for that. So. <laughs> So the four minutes would entertain a motion to approve them either as a block or individual. I would make a motion to approve the four sets of minutes, um, excluding the minutes from Tuesday, March 1st, um, as a block. I will second that no motion. All in favor? Say aye. 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 Okay. I'll step in and say aye. I just missed the last few minutes because we were dealing with Cal. <laughs> we just approved, we're just approving minutes, Peggy, unless you had any corrections. No. no thank you. Okay. On the public comments. Is there any public comment at this time? I'd like to um, bring something to the school board's attention, if that's okay right now. Please do. Okay. Um, my name's Karen Allen. For those of you that don't know me, um, I have three children in the district, um, one in kindergarten, one in third, one in sixth grade. Um, a concern of mine that I've had for quite some time now and I have spoken with um, Superintendent Canarney and Andrew Bowen a bit about it and lots of people in the community. And I think it's time to bring it to, to the school board as well. Um, my concern is that we have one planet services, but I feel like there's a need in our community to expand those extensively. Um, uh, as a working parent, um, I struggle tremendously trying to find care for my kids during vacation weeks, um, during August, um, during in-service, although that has improved drastically this year. Um, and I just want to find a way to help working families during those times. I think it's a pretty normal thing now to have school districts provide one, like after school, one planet services during vacation weeks. Um, and it's not something we're doing right now. Um, so uh, that is my main goal is to get more services from One Planet. Um, I do want to say that I, I, Tara has been wonderful at South Royalton. She's been great. And, and I want to give her kudos. Um, I do want to say that I appreciate that Superintendent Canari and Andrew Bowen worked with me to get 730 drop off so that kids could get at school earlier and so parents could get to work. So I appreciate that. Um, I do want to say that after working with you guys over the summer, you guys did bring more half day services to One Planet, and I appreciate that. So I do want to say thank you. I do appreciate the work we've done, but I feel like there's way more to be done. Um, and I have worked with the family place. I've reached out to them for those of you maybe that aren't familiar, but they help you provide child care services. Um, if you look on the Bright Futures or DCF website and you pull up right now, um, uh, school age childcare in our community, there's only one 
person or one community, one organization that provides that right now, and that's One Planet. Um, the one other person that we had in this community closed during COVID. So as of right now, the only licensed child care for school aged children in our district is One Planet. That's it. Nothing else. We have nothing. Um, so with that said, what I'm proposing is we need to look at having uh, February and April vacation coverage through One Planet. I'd love to see more coverage in August as well. Um, December break is not something that I need coverage for, but I don't know if others do. Um, I want all half days because we have 14 half days in our district. That is a lot of half days for people that work to figure out. I want them all to have consistent pickup times. Like I said, you guys have increased that and I appreciate that. But I think it's hard when sometimes it's a three o'clock pickup. Sometimes it's 515. Sometimes it's five. Sometimes we find that information out days before the half day when that's going to happen. I think we need consistent coverage on all of those days. Um, so those are, that's what I'm asking for. And, um, it just needs to be, we need quality, affordable care. And I know it's not totally the, the school's problem, but the reality is, is we live in a rural area where this is a normal thing for the schools to, to help with this. Um, I've asked the family place to get me some data on the, all the schools in the area that provide this service, because it's a pretty normal thing to do. Um, and they're working on getting me that. Um, also, um, there's many things I'm willing to do to help with this as well. Again, I'm not saying please solve this. I'm saying, please help me solve this. Please be a partner with me because I know it's not just me that needs this. Um, I think parents are at their breaking point. I know I am. Um, and I'm just asking for some help. Um, there are some things that I'm proposing. Um, I'm happy to keep working with the family place. They said they'd be happy to come to one of our meetings and talk about the need for child care services in our community and how the school could help with that. Um, like I said, the family place is willing to get me data on the area schools that are doing this kind of service so, you can, so that people can see that this is a normal thing that we do in Vermont as, as a, a service to, the, to working families. Um, I'm willing to get a petition out there. So if you need to see that there's a need for this, I'm willing to work on that and do that through social media if that's what we need. Um, I guess that what I'm asking for the, from the board is that we, um, I'd love to see a survey go out to families and ask what their needs are. Um, and again, I'm happy to help with that too. I'd love to see there be a committee to discuss this in more detail. Um, and I'd love to, if we need to draw another uh, community partners like the rec department, because I knew sometimes that's also a partner in this. So that's my quick and easy, but I have a lot more to say, but that's, that's, I honestly wanted to have more ducks in a row. And honestly, I thought maybe the meeting was next Tuesday, but I guess the first Tuesday was the first day of the month. So therefore we're here, here on the 15th. Um, but anyway, that's my story. And um, I'd love to hear your thoughts on how maybe we can partner on this. All right, thanks, Karen. Um, that is a good good thing to bring up and uh i wonder if this we should add something to it for next meeting yes, an official okay. um agenda item and give you guys a chance to think about what options we might have that we could discuss <clears throat> next meeting does that sound reasonable karen yeah, that's fine. And like I said, I can do some more work between now and then. Like I said, I'm happy to help. I'm happy to rally people. I'm happy to do whatever we need to do. Um, I know I'm springing this on you guys, and um, that's fine. I just wanted to get the conversation going because I know how long this stuff takes to actually happen. Um, and I felt like I just want to at least put it out there today. And yeah, if we can have more discussion, that would be great. Um, but I think it's time. I think it's time that we really start thinking about how we can support working parents in this community. We live in a rural area and the reality is, is we don't have a lot of resources in this area if you don't have family to help you. All right, uh, Shannon. Yeah, um, thank you, Karen, for um, coming in and speaking to this issue. It is something that I think we've talked about and around before, 
um, and especially in in relation to our preschool program and what what services are necessary and and would be beneficial to the community and and where do we fit in give, in providing those services and how do we um you know i i would say i agree it's really hard to use one planet as a primary resource for child care as a working parent when one planet doesn't ha it doesn't happen for half the summer right like there's only six weeks or something that they do so um it may be something that we need to talk about a task force you know with one board member and and we i know we did that for the preschool program we've got a couple of task force going and they, they tend to be um pretty helpful and then you know they can put something together and bring us back what do they think what do they what's their recommendation what's the budget look like that kind of thing so. and i also want to put out there i'm an educator so i feel like it's kind of a double whammy for me because we don't line up our vacation weeks so i'll have a week off before you guys have a week off and then i don't have any days to take off to then you know watch my kids i, I don't like i can't take a week off and then take another week off to be with my kids so it's kind of like i you know i have three personal days a year i can't take a vacation when they take a vacation um i know i'm just trying to go to work I, that's all I'm i know to i know I, I hate that we follow the and jamie can correct me if i'm wrong here but we follow the randolph schedule we have to um there's no way around it. i know we have teachers um we have families with kids in the district and their their parents teach at hartford and they're they never line up and it's so well, frustrating it's interesting so, because i work at hartford um i've been there this is my fifth year at hartford and so we do hear you when i was there the first couple of years the one vacation lined up so it was almost like you guys lined up one with randolph and one with hartford because you use their tech center is that not a thing anymore? that's not the way it works unfortunately so next year's calendar will line one up with hartford because we lobbied okay. randolph and cvsu to get them to join us with the south so there's two calendars a northern calendar and a southern calendar and our three SUs now will have one vacation with the North, one with the South. So you will have one right up again next year. Well, that that's good. I'll take at least one. <laughs> that's better than, than none. You know, we heard that loud and clear. And, and so the three of us superintendents agreed that we would do one with the North. It really impacted us the most, um, although it did impact Randolph a little bit too, not to have it lined up with the South. So one now lines to the North, one lines to the South. The February break will be aligned to the south. Okay. And again, um, uh, Jamie, I appreciate the work you've done with me this year. Um, I just feel like we need probably, you know, you got a lot on your plate, and I just feel like we need to bring it even bigger and have. No, I appreciate it. A committee or a task force or, or, or just more people looking at it. I feel like I've been going at it alone, and I just, I really am at a point where I think we, we need to just. Yeah, do something else. Okay. Hi, so um, if I captured this correctly, one of the board members was suggesting to review options and data to have a larger discussion on this at the April board meeting. I need to be cognizant so that all parties are aware. I think that the April vacation is scheduled for April 17th. And so if Karen is asking for something for addressing the April break. Um, I just got to call a flag on the play and say that's possibly yeah. not going to be addressed, but um, board members may be better versed to speak at this. We won't be prepared to address it for this year. I think we're looking at no. a longer term plan. I mean, that would be fabulous. I honestly don't have a plan for April, but I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> Great. I just wanted to make sure we addressed, we were direct um, rather than kind of thinking differently. Great. One thought for April would be for um, like the uh, ski runners bus, you know, you have a different parent volunteer each week. And if something would be possible for that, like where we provide a school room, but then the parents provide the actual care and kind of rotate through so that they don't. That's, There's a, that's why I think we got to talk about it. There's a lot of liability. Yeah, now. And so, I kind of figured. Just, yeah, we just, I think we got to dig into this more. I think those are great solutions. I just think we, we should vet them out. Sure. Okay. Well, 
but we'll officially talk about it next next school meeting and hopefully come up with something for future vacations. <laughs> Thank you. Extra. I appreciate it. Yeah. Is there any other public comment at the time? Before we leave public comment, I'd like to just recognize Emily Bean, who's here at the table with us. I don't know that uh, we've gotten to introduce you all yet, but Emily is a senior. Uh, Vice President of the senior class and serving as a student rep tonight, right? Yep. Yep. So thanks for coming out, Emily. Uh, so it's ex always exciting when we have students here at the table, even though our meetings aren't always super exciting. I appreciate your willingness to, to help us out there. All right. Thanks, Emily. Yeah, you get to see the <laughs> annual review. Particularly exciting one. Um, okay, if there's no more public comment, um, we'll move on to board comment. Does any of the board members have anything they want to share at this time? I do. Um, so, um, Andra actually already knows this, but um, we will be moving back to South Royalton this summer, um, back to my family's um, uh, sort of multi-generational farmhouse. Um, so right now I'm serving as a Bethel board member. Um, I'm hoping that since the move, we are <laughs> in the midst of moving things now, but um, I think technically we probably won't change our address till June, but um, I'm hoping that we can make it work with the open board seats that I wouldn't have to step off the board um, and leave the board short. Um, with all those committee assignments and things. But for right now, that is, we are definitely moving, selling our house in Bethel. So um, when we get to the discussion of, of uh, filling board vacancies, that's going to be a little complication in the mix. All right, yeah, why don't we talk about that once, uh, once we get there. But congratulations then. Thanks. We're glad you're staying in the district. Yeah, for sure. Yes, and I had actually reached out to Andrew earlier today, and we're arranging for Cooper to stay on the campus where he's comfortable. So it's very, very exciting to be able to have a little bit of freedom to move around in the two towns. Yeah. Except for this piece. This is the one thing where my, my mom's like, this is going to be a mess with the board, though. What will you do? All right, um, Celebration of Learning, fifth grade poultry project. I think I'll just kick it off by saying um, Mrs. Flores' class came up with this wonderful um, project and she's going to outline it. It's we have a recording from her class. Unfortunately, the whole class really wanted to be here to present, and then Mrs. Forza's daughter ended up being in the spelling bee this afternoon, so she couldn't make it to the board meeting. So uh, instead, they recorded a, a celebration of learning for you. So I'll, I'll let her do all the honors. I think we will we'll present it for all of us. The presentation is really good. Haven't seen the video. Hello, I am Rebecca Fors. I'm the fifth grade teacher here at Bethel Elementary School. Right before Christmas break, my fifth graders wanted to do a community project to give something back to our school community. And we came up with three options. One was uh, flower boxes in the front of the school. Uh, another one was working on signage around the trails of our uh, town. And a third was creating a chicken coop and uh, egg selling business. Um, they voted for a chicken coop and egg selling business. And here is a result of the re research that they've done so far. Hi, I'm Zoe Livingston. And I am Kensley Townsend Barkham. The benefits of chickens for kids According to the National Farmer School Network, when children have the opportunity to care for animals, there is an increase in school engagement and positive attitudes about school and learning. It provides children with opportunities for social and emotional growth, improves life skills, self-esteem, and sense of self, social skills, and behavior. There is a greater opportunity for necessary experiential and hands-on learning. It supports school readiness in young children, 
It encourages low-income students and students of color to engage in food and environmental issues in their communities. The National Institute of Child's Health and Human Development published a report that stated animals in the classroom have, an, have a positive impact and they can be motivating and engaging for children. They can help students to calmly sort through an argument or conflict. They help students focus on tough assignments and even make it easier for children to make friends with classmates and connect to teachers in the community. According to the NIDO, an early childhood organization, the research stated that animal interaction can actually improve children's social interaction, reduce stress and anxiety, and increase motivation in learning. The benefits for chickens and kids and all people in the school. Chickens will be a good idea to have. Chickens will be loved by kids. We can learn about chickens and what they eat and drink. We will take care of the chickens all year long. My name is Naomi Kinsley. And I'm Emmy Pollan. And we researched how to care for chickens. This year's fifth grade will make a book about the chickens and how to care for them. In the first weeks of school, the fifth graders will be trained in coop and chicken care. They will help train the other grades in school so that there will be a chore rotation for all grades. For about three years, Miss Tracy and Miss Spores will be taking care of them when there's no school. The book will educate kids so when they reach fifth grade, they can care for the chickens. We know it's a lot of work, but in the end, we'll have cute, fun, loving chickens for our school. I'm Carly Townsend. And I'm Kate M. Lloyd. And we research five types of chickens, and these chickens have good layers, can handle the cold, and kind of patrol. These chickens are the Light Sussex, the Rhode Island Red, Bird Rock, White Dunkel, and the White Crested Black Polish. I'm Josie Noel, and we research the needs of a chicken. Chickens eat about one fourth pound of feed each day. Chickens drink over one pint of water per day. Bedding, we will change it about every two weeks. A baby chick needs it to be about 70 to 75 degrees for I'm Salem Matt. And I'm Jocelyn Guerra. And we are talking about safety, safety of the chickens and safety of the children. Safety of the chickens. Secure windows and doors so predators can't get in. We will also have an automatic door so those predators don't get in. We will also teach students how to hold chickens safely and responsibly. Safety of children. We will have hand sanitizer available to use at all times. Just remember to use hand sanitizer after holding the chickens because hand sanitizer is bad for the chicken's health. We will have good coop boots to walk around the coop in. We will have nice chickens and we will have the students trained to hold the chickens safely and carefully so both the student and the chicken does not get hurt. My name is Asha White. And I'm Haley Griggs. And we are talking about the cost of everything. Coop, 7,000. We need a coop large enough for students to enter. We need strong weather tight coops so no weather gets in. Shed for persons, 1,000. The foundation, so the coop lasts a long time. It is off the ground. Utilities, 6,300. Lights. Chickens stop laying in the winter because of light. We will trick the chickens in thinking it is sunny. Water. Chickens need fresh drinking water for, to help control their body temperature. This will help in winter. We will also wash the we will also need to wash the eggs.
fencing. We need fencing because it provides protection for, for chickens. It is also an outdoor classroom, a.k.a. a moving space for the chickens, and so kids need protection from the weather. Chickens. The chickens cost $250. This first you will have pullets, chicks, and eggs. Feed. The feed costs $1,600. This covers three years of feed. Equipment. The equipment we need is shovels, waterers, feeders, wheelbarrows, brooms, and other such things. Our class raised $364 in our spelling bee fundraiser. We're using this money towards the project. I dream of a better tomorrow where chickens can cross the road without, the, without being questioned about their motives. Quote from Ralph Waldo em Emerson. This concludes our short presentation. Thank you very much for watching. Have a good night. That was really fun. Great so you. that's our first celebration of learning, and we're super excited to have fun-loving chickens ahead in our future. Yes, the chickens will all be nice. I love it. <laughs> These, uh, you know, I so I met with the class, and I pushed back on their budget a little bit, just so the board knows. Um, but we also did apply for some grant funding um, to support this project. Um, I also think one of my other concerns was just the management outside of school hours around the chickens. Um, I've got some commitment from staff around that. I also, you know, I've started conversations with Owen around, if we have some chickens, how can we look to emphasize that as part of the community schools grant? and get some community partners and some of the teachers are community partners, uh, but I think there's some opportunity there too with that grant. So we are looking to move forward with some chickens. The, and the idea would be that the chicken coop would also serve as an outdoor classroom. Um, and so I think there's some real good opportunity there um, as well. So do know that there's momentum to move forward to have some chickens come on campus. Thank you. I can't and wait I to use this as a recruitment tool. Maybe I was just going to say, we're, on campus, like come learn about our chickens. As you say, when we had nice cows on campus, we did everything we could to get them off. Yes. Well, that was adorable on Facebook as well. Totally different reason. Peggy, that must have been before you and I were involved. There's no way we'd have cows off. No, it's just this winter when we came back from Christmas break. There were cows on the playground, two of them, when we came back. From oh, right, right, right. Yeah, we oh, were, that's right. I forgot we about were over that. in Bethel. Yeah. Yeah. That tells you how much I'm on Facebook. Yes, you mean, yeah. <laughs> we were saying only in Vermont. Like, I think that story got shared <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> well, thank you, Andra and Mrs. Fors and everybody, uh, the whole fifth grade class. That was fun. We'll move now to the reports to the board. Jamie? Uh, so you have my report in hand. Um, we do have a full board meeting tomorrow night, just to remind folks, and I hope you can attend. I'm still worried a little bit about a quorum. Um, I'm, some of our regular attendees have mentioned that they may not be able to attend. The other thing I'll add is that I'm hoping to get our board development series back up and running, either at the end of this month or at the latest in April. The new VSBA trainer just came on board. Actually, they might come on board on in two days, the 16th, I think. So um, he's from Texas and he's joining the VSBA, but we will finish up our training series. Um, and it may be March, April, May, or it may be April, May, June. Um, the other thing is, is that um, there will be some further COVID guidance coming out as the Department of Health changed some guidance uh, earlier this week around quarantining requirements and testing and things of that nature. So I'll get a letter out clarifying some of that tomorrow. I met with SU nurses today. Um, and then I'll take any questions folks may have. Those of you who were not in attendance, it was a heartbreaking basketball state championship on Sunday. Uh, just a shout out to both our teams and their coaches. Uh, it was really great to have both varsity teams at the Barry Auditorium. And then also, I'm sure the principals mentioned this, Mama Mia is happening this weekend as well. 
which I'm looking forward to. Uh, and then finally, I uh, just want you to know that I do meet with Jeff Thomas already weekly, uh, and we've started trans some transition planning. Um, Owen and I met with him um, today. I know, Andrew, you're meeting with him later this week, and I believe, and at least he mentioned that. I think it's you, unless he met Onda. And, uh, and then um, – and Reed will start meeting with him on a regular basis too. And we've got some transition documents that Onda had from her previous SUs that I think will help with some of the transition work to make certain no pieces are dropped. So great. Now I'll take any questions folks have. Do I have anything for Jamie? All right, we'll move on to uh, the principals. Thank you, Jamie. Yeah. I would just highlight really quickly, I'm sure you've already checked out our, um, our report that we are working on training up with some of Dr. Ross Green's work, uh, collaborative problem solving. That's a big highlight for us. And we're working on doing a bunch of surveying right now. So surveys either have gone out or will be going out, climate surveys to families. So it's really important. We're going to take that data and some other surveys with uh, just to look at how we're doing, how we can do better going forward. We're also looking ahead to summer training. Does anybody have any questions for the principals? I, I'd add one. Jamie stole most of my Sorry. updates from the yeah, from when we wrote this, uh, <laughs> but it's also worth noting that uh, the Twin State Bowling Invitational for individual bowlers was this past Saturday. And a uh, White River Valley High School female bowler is the top bowler in oh, the wow. Twin State region, uh, oh, Hannah awesome. Bryan. And she came in 17th overall uh, in the Twin State region. So there were 16 males who scored better than she did, but she was the top female bowler. That's right. Honda, uh, oh, sorry, Andra. Can I ask a quick question about the, it looked like the survey that came out was something that was done that we didn't build. It was built by someone else like PBIS or. Yeah. And, and I think it's a hard survey um, because it's, you know, during COVID times. So, but we've been giving the same survey. Uh, and so, yeah, it's, it's trying to help us. Can I look at and that was meant just for elementary families? No, the same survey is going said on elementary at the top. That the one that you got so far is elementary. I'm not certain that the middle and high school have come out yet, but there's should be middle and high school coming out because we want to be able to look at the different program areas and see how it feels different. So here's what I'll say about it though. Because they were released at different times, mm -hmm. and what the first survey question is, which grades do you have a child in? And I put in third and eighth. And then I'm like, well, wait a minute. Am I doing this survey like based on an overall feeling about both? Or I think that maybe next year <laughs> or with the surveys that are about to come out, there needs to be more guidance on, please think about your child who is just in these grades. Because I had no idea. I mean, I would kind of answered the questions with a little bit of both because I had just included my eighth grader in it. That's good feedback. Thank you. Yeah. Because it has a, yeah, you're supposed to put in, I think it's got almost up to 12th, like to 12th grade, you can report. And I think we're time. like, we're, and we're super unique because I don't think a lot of schools are built like us. <laughs> so we could probably definitely do that better. I appreciate the feedback. I just worry about we're our also, data. So we're also okay. looking at whether or not that's the best climate survey to use and just know that Onda is piloting a couple others in other districts and then we'll compare notes to see do we need to tweak it is it is it giving us the information we actually want all right anything else for the principals all right uh tara you're up perfect timing <laughs> So you all have my report. Um, I outlined the due dates that we have currently in the business office for both uh, financials and uh, school food authority. 
one thing I wanted to just point out, um, I did receive a memo today. I have not read it in all detail, but it looks like uh, free and reduced will not be, or not free and reduced, um, universal free meals will not be extended for the summer nor next school year, but more information to come on that. And then if there's any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. That's all I have tonight. Well, just to clarify, it won't be extended by the USDA. There is momentum in the House for the for Vermont to actually provide that, and we're following that closely. And they would use part of that Ed Fund surplus to pay for it to initially get off the ground. The estimates are that it could be about forty million a year annually. So that's something we're monitoring closely. It's about four cents on the tax rate across the state. So just. Uh, I, I was going to mention that tomorrow night too to the full SU board. That is that is a bill in the local Vermont legislature that I have been told has a great deal of momentum. Okay. Thanks, Tara. Um, the WRBSU negotiations. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what all I can say here, Jamie. I, I think we can just, just say what happened last night. I think we should talk about an executive session. Okay. Yeah. So let's plan an executive session. Um, that's like item happening? 16. Yeah. We've got a, two executive. We'll have to add an additional one. Yep. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Only so because I, it's not that we want to hide anything, but what happened last night happened in executive session. So I want to make sure we're not breaking any rules. All right. Um, okay. Well, we're on to the uh, discussion for um, how to fill the board member vacancies. Um, so I think the goal is to Post. advertise them. Yep. And then. We'll appoint, hopefully find somebody at a point next month. So with Shannon moving, does it make sense to have her resign That's, and we can appoint her the Royalton one? And then yeah, let me just check one. with legal, Shannon. I'll email you. I just want to check it with legal. I mean, it sounds like you know you're moving in June. So let me just figure out how to best navigate that. Hope you're, you're muted. That being said, we're moving to my family's place. So we're kind of living in between the two at this point. So I I could argue it either way. Like, it doesn't matter when we. You know, I'll, I'll just walk this scenario through with Dina. Yeah. Thank you. Because I'd like to stay. <laughs> you know, I think we, we can figure that out. Okay. But yeah, they will get posted. Um, and please, you know, what we'll do is we'll look to, we'll get it out on our Facebook pages too. Uh, we'll put it in the papers, but then um, if anyone has um, front porch forum, I'm happy to have Kate McLean send you what we put on Facebook to also push out to sure. front porch forum. I think that might hit some folks who might be interested who wouldn't look at Facebook. Okay. Is Bethel have an active front porch forum too? Rodney or Shannon? Um, I'm not active on Front Porch Forum, but I can probably become active and post it there. Oh, thanks, Andrew. Oh, Andrew Andrew's. says she can. Right. So, Jamie, please just let me know what I need to do. Yep. All right. Um, so, the VSBA Code of Ethics. Um, did everybody see that in their packet? Um, we, I'm pretty sure we adopted this last year as well. We did, yeah. Um, so is everybody comfortable with adopting this again this year? Do you want to have any discussion about it? Okay. Um, I think we just all sign it individually, right? 
Yeah, I, I usually have the board take action though, just to adopt it, so we have it in the notes. Would anybody like to make a motion to uh, adopt the BSBA Code of Ethics? I would move that we adopt the BSBA Code of Ethics. I'll second it. <laughs> all right, all in favor, say aye. 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 We're adopting the code of ethics. We have a sec. You might have got another board member there. Yeah, really. I know. <laughs> I love it when the cows vote. Right. Um, okay. Well, then we're on to new hires and resignations. We have uh, one uh, retirement, Angela. Retirement or. Yeah, Heather Belanger uh, has let us know that she won't be uh, coming back. I know that she really wanted to, um, and she's been battling cancer, and she's was just in remission and came back and joined us, uh, and Royalton has been helping out Nico and is really enjoying it, but um, I think she feels like this is the time for her to put in her, her resignation, so she will be missed. She's worked in Bethel for many, many years. We may do some substituting, though, I think, for us, possibly still. Right, Andrew? I absolutely, I absolutely twisted her arm and made her say yes to that. <laughs> She's going to be greatly missed. Okay. Um, do we have any public comment at this time? Emily, usually we let students have a chance if there's anything you want to share about things going on in school, but I don't think we want to be on the spot anything. either. So, <laughs> yeah, um, I don't think there is anything. Okay. Well, we appreciate your presence. Thank you. Push for a civics proficiency. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, uh, then we'll move to uh, executive session. Um, first, um, for the contracts. A, yeah, first for the contracts. Um, who would we bring into this one? Uh, the principals can stay in Tara for this one. Okay. Um, it shouldn't take long. So, okay. Uh, can I have a motion to enter executive session? So I would motion that we enter executive session with the superintendent, the principals, and Tara, please. For a discussion of of contracts. Beautiful. I'll Beautiful. second it. That's the language that goes for that. Andrew, the, you guys are on mute. Huh. So we're returning to public session at 706. And I would move that we approve the DeWolf Engineering Associates to complete the White River Valley High School stormwater permitting project. I said I'd second. Yep. Okay. Um, any discussion? Okay. Well, um, all in favor, say aye. Aye. All right. Okay. It's approved. Um, I Thank entertain you. a motion to or for the negotiations to we for labor relations. Yep. And I oh you need me, I think, from okay. Shannon. I think everyone else can go. All right. Have a good night. Good night. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Um, I'd entertain a motion to enter executive session. Is this for negotiations or for Negotiations. Um, I'm wondering, Rodney, given your conflict, I, I'm just curious. Uh, actually, I can listen to it. I just can't voice my opinion on it. That's the way it actually reads in the ethics book or whatever. But yeah, actually, I probably just won't go to it. We lose our quorum. Okay, so okay. I just can't comment on it or vote on it. 
Okay, I don't think that this is going to be a voting issue, so. Right, so. Okay. Uh, would somebody like to make a motion to enter executive session? I would uh, make a motion that we enter executive session with Jamie um, to discuss contract negotiations at 708. I will second that. It doesn't like to bring me back to the main room. So once the timer's out, then it brings me back. <laughs> All right, we're recording again. I would move to come out of executive session at 7.15 with no action taken. I guess you moved it, I'll second. Great. Okay, um, I don't think we have any other. So uh, the next meeting date is Tuesday, April 19th at six at the Bethel campus. Um, I entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll I, will, it. <laughs> I will be in South Carolina for that meeting, but I actually just texted my parents who were going with, and I'm like, Tuesday night, there are just not enough of us. I'm going to have to like bring my laptop. So. <laughs> that will still need all for you. It's yeah, so you, you, you're pretty sure you'll be able to join though. Yes. Jenna? Yep. Yeah, we will be there all week. So we'll be arriving in there Sunday and we'll be fine. I have the ocean in the background and not just like a background background of the ocean. It might be awesome. <laughs> yeah, but I thought that if this was a seven o'clock meeting, I would now be fashionably late. <laughs> it's that hired hand you got. Peggy. Yes. Yeah. I have jobs I have to do. He has his jobs that neither the twain shall meet. But we like it when the cows vote. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's what, let, let you see the cows. Sorry. All right. Well, I think. Good night, everyone. Good night. All right. There I go. Bye. Thanks, Peggy.